Good morning, Aki. Come on, kiddo. It's practice time. All right, welcome back to Smoke and Mirrors. Today we have a special presentation. We're talking to the creator and producer of Scary Girl, Nathan Juravicious. Nathan is an author, artist, illustrator, IKEA designer, game creator, director, and much more. Nathan, your film Scary Girl hits the big screen this month and boasts a massive cast that includes Sam Neill, Deborah Melman, Anna Tov, Mark Colesmith, Remy He, and Tim Minchin. It's an honor to have you on the show. How are you feeling? Good. Yeah, I'm very uh, excited. This is my first uh, feature film, so I have those sort of slight nerves that you have leading up to uh, a, a release, but yeah, mostly just excited about it all. That's awesome. It's like putting your baby out in the world. You know what I mean? Your creation. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've had various releases that I've done with say games and with books for Scary Girl, but when it comes to uh, like film, this is, this is because it is my first film. It is like, like this newborn baby being kind of handed out to the world and, uh, judged <laughs> yeah 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 which is scary <laughs> if you're a parent that's mm, the scariest yeah, thing ever yeah, <laughs> yeah nobody wants um, to say it's an ugly baby or whatever but yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's a perfect segue so you've invested in scary girl and you've been creating this property which is extremely personal to you for over 20 years now um, and you've gone through these different iterations and platforms from toys to comics, books, games, to now a movie. Uh, what is the feeling just creatively attacking these different platforms and telling your story? Like what changes and what sort of feelings do you have going into it? Yeah, I mean, I've always treated uh, Scary Girl in some ways almost a little bit open source. In its, uh, in its storytelling. Um, so I've, you know, I've worked with, I've done two different types of games. I've done, you know, a, a graphic novel, there's been toys. Um, and each of them, even though they have a, a, a common thread, the storytelling for each one is actually fairly unique. Um, and so like sometimes characters that are bad become good. Uh, sometimes the journey, even though it's always to the city, it's something else happens in between. So oh. for each each different sort of medium, there's always been a uh, kind of a different take on it and there's been different contributors. Yeah, um, yeah so it's just been really interesting to see like, or well, what's next? How could this be reinterpreted? Even with, um, we did a like a VR um, free roam game and that was, yep. uh, you know, a totally different story altogether. Yeah. 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 And then depending on the platform, does that sort of dictate your way into the story and what changes? Oh uh, yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, with, with say um, so the games that we did, there was a lot of um, just look thinking about functionality and what we wanted um, people to participate in. So normally, you know, with a it's quite passive, you know, film watching. You know, even though you may have questions after, um, yep. there's not a lot of kind of human interaction. Whereas the games, you're always thinking, well, how does a person delve into this? What do we want people to do? How much exploration could they do? So there's a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, human thought process behind it. Who Who is actually interacting with this and how do we want them to feel and, and move in the world? Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's really interesting. Thanks so much for that. For my question. So you've accurately and beautifully defined your style as a mashup of character-based psychedelic Baltic folk tales that's been dipped in Canadian maple syrup and hung out to dry on an Australian clothesline. Was this style honed with <laughs> the creation awesome. of the Scary Girl franchise or were there multiple iterations of the style prior to coming to that conclusion? Yeah, yeah. I, You know what? I had totally forgot about that quote, but it's very <laughs> true. I, I hold multiple citizenships of different countries. So like I'm oh, wow. a, a Latvian citizen, Canadian citizen and Australian citizen. So wow. that's where all the different influences come from. Um, but yeah, before I was doing uh, Scary Girl, I was actually a... Uh, an editorial illustrator for um, like The Good Weekend, The Age, um, oh. ton, tons of magazines that were super boring, but they needed something to be kind of not so much decorative, but to enhance the story um, through really unique illustration. And so that's where I came in. I, I was kind of working for many years in, uh, as an editorial artist. And uh, yeah, I suppose all those, you know, dipped in 
maple syrup and coated with Vegemite influences came in uh, to that time. <laughs> That's awesome. It's so cool to see, like, you're almost like a man of the world. That's so exciting to hear as well, like going through that kind of journey and how that sort of molds, like, your output. So cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, it's like, you know, I think anything that's going to be personal or um, feel authentic, you really want to bring out um, where you actually came from. So, you know, I mean, I grew up, you know, every every week going and visiting my Latvian and Lithuanian grandparents. So that's always going to be infused into my work on a story level or visually. Um and, you know, obviously the Australian side and and to some degree the Canadian side is all being mashed up into all my influences. So, yeah, when you look at the film, you know, you'll you'll see certain bits of uh, maybe it's colour wise. It might be the Lithuanian, Latvian kind of colour aesthetic come out or um, even there's spacecrafts that are uh, there's one that looks like a koala. So there's even something that, you know, has an Australian yeah. kind of influence there as well. At the start of the movie, there's a sort of wake up sequence. Was that Wallace and Gromit inspired? A wait oh that oh yeah, yeah. Do you know what? I didn't even think about that. The uh but I mean I do love stop motion and um an yeah. ardent fan, but I didn't even think that that could be a, an influence on that opening scene. But yeah. who knows? Subconsciously, you know, there's so <laughs> many things that go into your your universe. I mean you know, we're not we're not born out of a in a vacuum. Uh, so yeah. everything that is mashed into, you know, to the film on a visual level, um, which was that was my role was you know production designer on the film, uh, is from you know all my years of existence. Um, yeah, you know, grabbing little bits and pieces in and uh, and infusing them into the film. When when you seen the finished film what it looked like with the voices attached and everything. What was that, that sort of moment where you realized like, wow, this is like, I've seen it from a toy to a comic to a game and now it's fully voiced and full motion. I mean, for me, seeing, seeing the characters actually speak was probably the biggest thing for me because in the past, the, the graphic novel was actually a wordless graphic novel uh, in the yep. games. No characters actually spoke. Mm -hmm. uh, so to have for the very, very first time characters actually speaking and hearing their voice through this animated kind of avatar, it was, it was incredible. Yeah. It was really, um, it was quite a, I don't know. It was quite emotional actually to see yeah. characters, characters speaking. I can imagine. Yeah. Cause you know, you, you don't, you don't know who's going to be your, you know, like who's going to be Dr. Maybe. And then suddenly Sam Neill is speaking yeah. through one of your character designs. <laughs> yeah. It's like a legend. So yeah, it was yeah. amazing. It was a really, it was really cool. Yeah, man. It was, it was such an awesome movie, such an awesome ride. I actually caught it with my son today. So I did a rewatch today and from just from his sort of perspective of wonder, catching all the detail and whatnot, he like, he was there loving it. So he put the iPad down, <laughs> which is always great. <laughs> That, that's so cool. Yeah, because it is it is aimed at uh, it's more aimed at a younger audience. I mean, that's I mean, older you know an older audience can really enjoy it. You know, especially on the visual nature. But I mean, it has a like a strong message for kind of you know that sort of you know six to eleven kind of sweet spot yep. um, that it's aimed at. And um, it, I suppose it's in some ways the first time I've done something and been involved in something for such a younger crowd with Scary Girl. Oh. It's always been a little bit aged up and this one was kind of more like a right. let's aim for that you know real folk uh sort of family family uh type film and and i think that really hit hit the right sort of zone of being a family film yeah 100 percent. thank you yeah. no problem yeah <laughs> it's, it's, it's uh I'm, I'm glad that uh your uh your kid enjoyed it oh yeah 100 percent. he's eight and he just came home from school. So the last thing that he wants to do is focus for a long period of time, but it held his attention the full 90 minutes. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's really, really cool to hear. Yeah, definitely. Do you reckon there's, there's a possibility of more scary girl to come or possibly even someone else being the forefront in their own story within the same universe, maybe bunny guru, perhaps like a backstory or a sequel. It's, it, it's funny you say that. I don't know. I don't know if you've been hearing through the grapevine, but yes, we are definitely looking at um, sort of spin-offs uh, of nice. characters and Bunny Guru and Egg are actually um, really, uh, they're, I mean, they're the most, 
popular of all the characters actually from the Skerrigal universe. Mm, um, yeah. so I could really imagine uh, like a spin-off of those two characters. Um, but then there's also these other, you know, I mean, what what do the characters do later on? I mean, what is what is Tree Dweller in the film? You know, what's her role in the future or what was her past? We don't really know a lot about the yeah. past and future of characters. So to me, I, I think there's uh, it's ripe for spin-offs or you know games that focus you know on other characters or explore you know backstories or even even their own story that's not even related to the scary girl world it's just a, a standalone kind of uh, universe nice yeah because i when i was watching a, a playthrough of the the game the the one that was on xbox um i noticed that bunny guru was was very different in the game compared to the film as well so um, I'm not sure if you can elaborate on, was that a big change? Like, was there a huge like decision-making process to, I guess, flesh him out more instead of being like a guide for Scary Girl? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Bunny Guru has always been the most un- sort of complex character because he's in the book and in some other sort of stories, he's always been a little bit of a, a little bit dubious as a, as a guide or as a guru, like he's called Bunny Guru, but he actually, you know, a lot of times, a lot of times he doesn't have powers. He's not like, he's not really a guru. Um, <laughs> he'd like to be one, but he's always, um, he's always a little bit down and out with his luck. So he's kind of doing a lot of things secretly, maybe to get money or like, you know, he, he betrays Scary Girl um, or, or Aki as she's known in the film. Um, he's, but I like that because he's, he's such a, um, probably a human, quite a human character. He's got the flaws of what we understand that we all have. Like it, it, it's, I'm not as excited about characters that are just constantly like perfect. Like you want that idea of, you know, the flawed character is the most interesting, you know, when you watch a lot of films, often the bad guy is the most interesting character in film. Yeah. yeah. Um. So to me, you know, Bunny is that great sort of mixture of like, you know, um, he's almost like the Han Solo of, of of you know uh this film where he's kind of like begrudgingly does something or he does something but it's for something else but then you know he turns around and and becomes the hero of the story so yeah it's as much as um it's it's as much of Aki's story as is bunny guru and egg story as well yeah 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 reluctant hero that's mm. awesome did you get a chance to work with the actors voicing the roles no, I mean, with the voices, uh, that was the, the directors were um, really focused on the the cast. I did, though, get to have a like a pre-call with all the the cast. So that was exciting. It was kind of, um, you know, even though I couldn't be there in the room with them, you know, doing their thing, um, I was able to sort of like chat through and there was like a sort of a, a little bit of a and a before we um, before they kind of went off and did their voices. So um, it was yeah. great. I, I really enjoyed chatting with them. Um, like, I mean, like Remy was like, uh, like great to chat to, you know, um, like Jill who, who voices Aki, you know, mm-hmm. really enthusiastic and, and they, a lot of, they take their voices so seriously. Like they're really like, you know, what's the backstory, How, you know, what's their motivation? And I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, of course. It's like a, <laughs> like, like a classic Hollywood thing, you know, tell me what my backstory is so I can act that way when I'm projecting the voice, you know, uh, you know, to the camera and, yeah, it was it was great. It was great involved being great to be involved in that. But yeah, um, I wasn't in the room when they were actually doing the, the actual records. And just reading in the in the media kit, you talked about how the inspiration for Scary Girl came from your own daughter and the the birth of your own daughter. Has she now watched the movie? She's seen a lot of stuff, but I have yet to show her the full film. So I mean, she's like yeah. a. She's 21 now um, and uh, and she's been waiting for this sort of film to come out for, for years. And uh, yep. now that it's out, I haven't actually shown it to her because I'm waiting for it to be on a big screen and I don't really want yep. to just yeah. on a little a little screen. So um, I want to give her the best kind of sound and, and visuals for yeah. when she sees it. Yeah. My other kids have seen it, but she hasn't seen it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No so, spoilers. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't want to send her a screener. I just wanted to be like, no, we're we're seeing this on a like the best possible screen we can. That's awesome. That that must be amazing to share that with your kids. Like you were the inspiration for the basically the the idea of this. 
Yeah, I mean, the, you know, it's funny because kids can be like very blunt in how they feel about things. And my kids are growing up. My oldest is, you know, almost 24. Uh, my youngest is like 19. And, you know, they can be quite, you know, jaded about what they see. And and for me, it was really cool to actually have them sit down, watch it and and really and like it. <laughs> you know, what I mean, it's kind of like, yeah. Because often, you know, as you know, you think you're doing all this cool stuff and your kids are like, yeah, it's a bit lame, but they were actually <laughs> really good. my youngest, yeah, who's 19, was just like, yeah, I want to see it again straight away. She was really, really into the film. And and I think it's, you know, I mean, she loves anime um, and she likes a lot of kind of uh, like, you know, Japanese graphic novels. And I think this there's a little bit of that kind of influence coming into the the film in some degrees. So I think it hit some of those sensibilities that she's really into. And just just in terms of your own personal influences going into the film, what what were some of those? I mean, I'm I'm, I'm such a I mean, I'm a sci-fi nerd. I I love uh, you know uh, tons of sci-fi films. I, I'm really into stop motion stuff. So you know, give me a, a really good stop motion film, especially from the uh, you know, the early, early days of, of stop motion. Um, you know, I mean, I nightmare before Christmas, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. you've got, uh, um, you know, you know, Schwankmeyer, you know, uh, like the stop motion stuff from that, the Alice and, uh, what is it? The, um, Alice in Wonderland that they did, or was it the, uh, I can't remember what, which one, um, looking oh. through the looking glass, I think was, was one of the, okay. the, yep. the animated things, but, yeah, I love um, stop motion films. My dad's a huge influence on me. He's a he's like a potter and sculptor and painter. So wow, growing up, I mean, he was huge influence on um, just the shapes of things. If a lot of my characters actually have a quite a a pottery sort of symmetry about them, um, which uh, I think was influenced from my dad. I mean, when I was growing up, my dad did all these weird sculptures with baby faces and stuff and i feel like i might have been traumatized but also in love with these sculptures (laughs) Um, and and it really comes out in my work i can see a lot of those influences back in the in the kind of the late 70s early 80s uh that came through my dad's work so i'd say that would be a a big thing and yeah sci-fi stuff i mean you know blade runner classic you know alien um you know fifth element came later but that was a great that was a great uh you know i, I love that film so much yep. one of those kind of comfort films that i can watch over <laughs> yeah. and over and, yeah a hundred percent nathan thank you so much for for joining us to today on our show um we appreciate you taking the time out and wish you all the best for the release of um, of Scary Girl out next week, October 26th in Australia, and seeing it with, with your daughter, the uh, Aki in the flesh. Um, yeah, thanks again. We wish you all the best. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Yeah, it was a real, real pleasure to talk to you. Nothing to it, but to do it. Yeah.